and welcome to the Six Five Summit. I'm Shelley Kramer, one of the founding partners of Futurum Research. And on behalf of my team here at Futurum and the team at More Insights and Strategy, welcome. We're glad to have you. In this spotlight session, Raj Singh, the Executive Vice President of Processors for Marvell Technologies, shares with us how Marvell is driving 5G innovation with deployment proven solutions and stack software integrations. 5G is enabling really exciting use cases across industries. We know this, right? And the technology that Marvell is deploying is a critical piece of that puzzle. This will be a fascinating conversation. Let's get to it. Welcome to the 65 Summit. I'm going to talk to you about 5G networks and edge computing. My name is Raj Singh. I run the process of business here at Marvell. And as you will see, Marvell is a leader and has been for many years in both 5G and wireless communication for infrastructure throughout the world. We have marquee names like Samsung and Nokia, who, who we partner with to bring 5G technology to the market and most recently Fujitsu in Japan and Facebook connectivity as, as well and others that are not yet announced. We provide complete end-to-end -end platform solutions. And we provide them in a way that enables our customers to bring this very innovative technology to the market in a robust, qualitative and, 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 and early to market methodology. We are, with the last 15 years, we've been providing products for wireless connectivity, for backhaul, for radio networks, for, for uh, transport processing, for baseband, and most recently for, for, for um, L1 beamforming processing in, in radio as well. Today, for Merchant Silicon, we truly are the number one provider of silicon and software in the world. And by our last count, we've shipped over 100 million units into the marketplace, and over 2.2 billion people are now connected to networks using our technology and, and our software and, and, our, and our hardware. And th this is, a, of course, rising. Large, some of the very large networks in the world, in India, in China, in Japan, in Korea, and even here in the US, are based on, on Marvel technology and silicon. And if you look at 5G networks, they are evolving into something quite interesting and, 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 and quite complex. And we'll see later on, there's a real necessity of why that evolution took place and how the, the, the market and the industry is capitalizing that, how Marvel is playing to that and enabling the, the ecosystem. And if, and, if, and if you look at this diagram, what you will see is, of course, there's a traditional radio heads, 2D, 2R, 44R, but there's also now a proliferation of massive minor radio heads, 16T, 32T, 64T. This is driven by the need for capacity and the need for speed where you're able to steer multiple beams of, of MIMO and, and, and to, to specific devices to increase capacity or guarantee certain qualities of service. And in the same metamorphosis of the network, we're also seeing mobile edge computing happening at the edge of the network rather than at the core. So that the, 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 the very edge of the network is now more intelligent, as is the far edge of the network. And in the near edge of what used to be, you know, conventionally in, in, a, in, a, in a collapsed base station, the central office type, type, type locality, you're, you're getting not just traditional virtualized um, uh, chassis based systems, but also um, uh, servers with uh, PCI cards that were doing inline and other acceleration to pro provide L1 acceleration. The far edge remains the province of CUs and, and, and L2, L3, and the RICs. But in the combination of these is, is, is very exciting because it's for the first time in 35 to 40 years, it's changing the topology of, of the network. And why did this happen? Well, if you look at the diagram top of a traditional RAT, historically, you know, you could maybe there's some RNCs and other control thing, but historically you had a radio tower we had radios at 2T, 2R, maybe 44R, really interesting. And even with LTE, the connection from that to the, to, to the baseband unit, either at the cell side or in a set, co-located in the central office, was an optical fiber on, on, on CIPRI, so the, the common um, pu public radio in, interface, um, which of course was somewhat 
customized by each vendor with vendor extensions to, to match their particular needs. But at 20 megahertz at 2G2R, the combination requirement for traffic is about seven gigabits per second plus. Now, if you were to extrapolate that to 5G, where the bandwidth is not 20, but 100, and, and the antennas are not two, but potentially 32 uh, at, at eight or 16 layers, you have 300 plus gigabits per second. Now you, and a single fiber would maybe handle eight to 10. To, so so it's, it's, it's problematic to have 30 of these fibers going to a single radio band. And the backhole similarly grew from 225 to seven. Now seven is in the range of being able, a, a, a ethernet uh, traffic being able to, to manage that. But if you look at the way you solve that, the way 3GPP did the definition of 5G standard, that said, aha, yes, you can have standard BBUs. And yes, there's a, a, a split eight that lets you either use um, ethernet or optical fiber on the front hall. But the, the smarter money is to do more of the processing in the radio head, such that a lot of the sweeps and other things that you need to throw away at the beginning, reduce the amount of traffic going from the radio head to, to the DU. And of course, as you can see here, it went from 314 to 25. Now 25, you can handle on ethernet all day long. And of course the mid hall is seven and the, and the back hall is seven as well. These are very manageable portions. And that was the beginning of how the split thing. This is a conventional 7.2 split. Oran came along and said, well, if that's the case, the, the, the true nirvana is, is to provide a defined protocol between the DU and the RU, such that you know, vendor ABC can interoperate with radio, of a DU is going to interoperate with, with radios from vendor XYZ and, and everything is good. And that gives flexibility, it gives choice, it increases competition and innovation, and that's all goodness. So the splits were a necessity. Oran used the split specifically the, the RUDU interface and, and codified that in a way which defined both the messaging, the protocol, the signaling, the compression, decompression mechanism and the timing so that things would work in a more cohesive way, which is a very good thing for the industry. Now within Marvel, we, we have also adopted this. We've said, look, there's a way to do this both in conventional networks. Conventional networks aren't good for it. 95% of the networks deployed today are conventional net networks are either chassis based, but they are, there is a desire on both for geopolitical reasons and for government intervention, as well as with operators to have more flexibility and, and uh, to, to have a more open system and ORAN certainly provides that. So we are now providing silicon in the radio head for the lower L1 for 5G, that's shipping silicon today for a number of our customers. We're providing the baseband, uh, uh, full baseband silicon as well as upper baseband silicon and L2 processing for the digital unit, for the distributed unit, and then the central unit for the upper L2, L3, uh, and the backhaul uh, interfaces. And, and now this takes care of a conventional chassis-based thing. What it does not do is address what happens if you want to use COT servers in, in, and, and, and either in the near edge or the far edge, use in some form of offload. We've taken a view that yes, you can do offload and we can do that, but it, the, the, the much better way of doing um, uh, COTS-based server implementations, and it's a much harder way, is to have true inline uh, processing of data. And as most of you know, and wireless inline processing is harder, but it's much more effective because you can have more capacity. You don't have the constraints of not being able to do calm or carrier aggregation or many of the other thing, advanced techniques that are prevalent in the industry. Because one of the things that we're very keen to do at Marvell, and we have done with our customers, is that whether you're doing ORAN or you're doing VRAN, you're doing conventional chassis-based things, or you're doing pizza boxes, that you should not be losing functionality. You should not be going back backwards. You should have feature parity. You should have the same performance level that you need to, 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 to do this. And with that in mind, here, here's an example of the kinds of things we do in the radio unit, in the base station unit, in the central unit. And in each case, we have a number of different pieces of silicon and appropriate software associated with it that deals with each one of these, both for L2 control in the central unit, the connectivity, then the DU, we have both L2 transport, baseband processing, 
files. We can do custom ASICs for certain of our customers and the radio unit, Massive MIMO, as well as connectivity and DFE as well. So if you go past this, what are we doing in enabling it? We partnered with our, uh, our, 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 our company called Analog Devices on the East Coast, which is a world leader in RF technology to do a complete uh, IU design for a 7.2 split massive MIMO. Before this was announced, and this will now be shipping in Q3, Q4 of this year, all the, the, the massive MIMO designs that was SOC based were the province of tier ones, many of whom are our customers, but all of the ones that were in the, in the public domain for uh, the startups and other companies to, to inhabit required um, people to use FPGAs, which meant the boxes were much, much bigger, they just spared a lot more heat, they needed different mounting mechanisms and were more expensive. We, for the first time in conjunction with uh, analog devices are offering a solution to the marketplace, which is licensable, that provides the SOC-based design at 32, 32R, 100 megahertz, of course, provides the software for lower L1 beam forming, and, and of course, all the RF software, which analog devices just really famous for. We're providing a, a, a single pizza box integrated DU, which has L1 and L2 integrated, and L3 integrated all thing, including IPsec, on the back hall and then air crypto on the front hall. All of our baseband silicon, whether it's complete baseband in line or uh, L1, upper L1, has front hall connectivity built into the SOC. There's timing built into the SOP. So ORAN compatible one has 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 some uh, compression decompression built in as well. And you can see at the, the last one on this list is of course the, the one which says, this is an inline acceleration, as I spoke about earlier, which we believe to be the way of the future. We have we've enabled this with a number of our customers in a way that gets them to market and gives them very high capacity in a single car, allows them to do advanced techniques, as I said, like COM and, 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 and carrier aggregation, both across FTD bands and in, in, in interband and intraband and across FTD and TDD and 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 and, and as, as spectrum becomes more fragmented and it becomes more 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 sparse, this becomes a very important thing for us to do. So, in summary, what we've been doing over the last decade and a half is enabling large parts of the ecosystem in the wireless infrastructure space to be able to quickly and effectively go to market with, with solutions that are deployable, that are robust. And have nine, uh, nines, five nines of, of, of reliability and are at par with what, 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 what uh, customers are used to today. The, the innovation from 5G, of course, also is that 5G is not something that is just for devices or handsets or tablets or, or, or cell phones. It's much more than that. It has industrial components. It, it'll power smart cities and and, and, and smart grids and vehicular traffic and, and, and uh, the communication in, in augmented reality, in gaming, in remote medicine. These are all very key components of a low latency, always on very high speed network that, 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 that 5G is and has great promise to literally change the effect of society in, in the future. Thank you for listening. I really appreciate your time.